Hello, watch me here and welcome back to Small Higurashi when they cry. Um, just quick thing before we continue. Uh, if you have any idea how much longer you expect uh, this to go, just so I know uh, how to split the parts roughly, and so that I don't end up with just uh, ending a part about five minutes before the end of the entire thing. Uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments. Uh, and with that, let's continue. And that was when Hanyu stepped forward and placed herself in front of me on. Hanyu? Abunai kara sagatte! Yukan naru Mio. Anata no yuki wa sore de chubun des. Hito no yo no baba no ki ga kanarazu hito ni oshitsuke rare na kereba nara nai mono nara ba sore o hiki uteru no ga atashi no yakume. あんた、何を私も部活メンバーに加われてよかった。この世界はすごく楽しかったです。私も部活メンバーに加われてよかった。見ているだけじゃなく、加わる部活は本当に楽しかった。ありがとう。もう十分に楽しんだ。in that moment, Hanyu glared at me adamantly. さあ、撃て。人の子よ。人の世の押し付けずには済まぬ罪を放て。それを受け止めてやる。わかったわ。わかったわ。わかったなら死ね。the club members must have thought I was joking, or bluffing. They didn't think that I would actually shoot. There was a noise like something exploding. In a world where time became as sticky as syrup, we saw it happen. The silver bullet hitting an invisible wall in front of Hanyu, as though the wall was protecting her. The bullet wanted to pierce Hanyu's chest but it couldn't reach its goal. A bead of sweat formed on Hanyu's forehead. She had stopped the bullet with an invisible force. <laughs> the silver bullet was being pushed back. Takano was startled by this otherworldly phenomenon. Then she spoke one phrase. <laughs> Silver bullet smashed through that invisible wall. There was no longer a wall at all. There was no wall to protect Tanyu from the bullet. A bullet approached Tanyu's chest. Somebody let out a silent scream. Nobody could stop it. Nobody could stop that bullet. In that world of frozen time, nobody could stop the bullet that was stopped just inches in front of Hanyu's chest. Hanyu's friends had seen this scene before. The moment of checkmate. No matter how much they screamed, there was no way to avoid this tragedy. They knew that from their memories. <laughs> あなたは死ぬ。好きなだけそうまとをご覧なさい。それが終わったら胸板をぶち抜かれて血をばらまいて自分の血で溺れて<笑><笑> Hanyu thought that this would take care of everything. Hanyu wasn't supposed to exist in the first place. She would leave the stage and the rest of the cast would stay unharmed. This is how it's supposed to be. But in that moment, something happened to surprise even Hanyu. In the world of frozen time in which nobody could move, Rika 
reached out and put her hand on the bullet but was stopped in mid-air. How could she move? Even Honey couldn't move. Why? Could a mere human like Rika grab that bullet? <笑>それを驚くのはおかしいわ。あんたと学んできたんじゃない。奇跡の起こし方。今日何度もすごいことが起こったけれど、本当の奇跡なんて何一つ起こしちゃいないわ。すべて死んじゃえば起こって当然の
tension lifted in Leon's body, and she began to sweat all over. All the club members thought the same thing. It was a miracle that the bullet didn't hit anyone. The club members had all felt the same way. They were all thinking, if it's going to hit someone, let it hit me. However, Rico Frude wished for a miracle that was far beyond that. Rico wished for a miracle that was higher than self-sacrifice. She was wished for a world where the bullets wouldn't hit anyone. She wished for a world where Takana wouldn't be hurt because she shot someone. Footsteps were rushing towards them. Takana tried to run, but she tripped over a root and the scrapbook in her hand scattered everywhere. As she tried to gather up the papers, members of the bloodhound surrounded her. All the bloodhounds pointed their guns her way, and some even poked her with them, but Takana still didn't get an arm stop gathering up the papers. Some of the men stepped on the papers, and Takano tried to pull them out from under them. She tried to pull them out, begging them in tears not to step on her precious papers. Club members, feeling bad for her, looked at the ground. Takano just wanted to pick up the pages of her scrapbook. With her bloodhounds, thinking that she was just resisting, pulled on her hair to try to make her stand up. Although this was her fate, it was too hard to watch her be treated that way. And then, a noble voice resounded among them. Mate! Oh. <laughs> Radiating with divine light, hmm, a man appeared. They all knew this man very well, but they had never seen him look so determined. <laughs> シレーブから直ちに東京へ連行せよと命令を受けています。君たちは彼女を見て気づかないのか。彼女の全身を見ろ。かきむしった後でいっぱいじゃないか。ひなみざ証拠軍のかなり高いレベルの発症が疑われる
Their job was to arrest her, after all. Any interrogations or investigations after that were the job of investigations. So if those are the orders from investigations, and that was that. Tomotake walked over to the muddy figure of Takano. <laughs> Takano buried her face in Tomotake's chest and cried. Only Tomotake and Takano knew the meaning of those tears. <laughs> そうだね。君の罪はひょっとすると軽いものじゃないかもしれない。でも大丈夫。僕が一緒だから。だから一緒に償おう。高野美代の罪を償おう。そして僕と一緒に悲しみよこを取り戻そう。その日まで僕は決
the game ended without Elisa. <laughs> Hanyu was prepared to leave after the game was over, but she was still there. She was allowed to be there. In other words, she wasn't the card that was taken away. The card that was taken to play their game with the fourth bachelor was no longer there. The breeze rustled and this is where she messed up there. <laughs> she was dumbfounded. Rika went over and stood next to her. She didn't need to say anything. She only smiled at Honey. That girl had pretended to be a bystander, but decided to step up onto the stage. And then she thought that was enough, and tried to step off of it. With those memories of her bright time on stage, she tried to step off, but someone grabbed her sleeve and stopped her. She was told that she could stay. Then she realised she was still on the stage, and she didn't have to leave after all. There was a spot for her on the stage, and she was no longer a bystander. And that was an unbelievable miracle. She didn't even exist in the script. Nobody needed her to be there. But the miracle had allowed her to stay. Rika smiled at Hanyu one more time and passed her what was in her right hand. <laughs> Hanyu felt something cold and hard. What was it? Hanyu slowly opened her hand and looked at it. It was the bullet Kamo had fired. Surprising no one. Uh, this was the proof of their miracle. It was the proof that Hanyu could exist there. It was the proof that they could be together forever and ever. もうすぐ暗くなってお祭りの時間になりますでしょ。はあ。みんなで楽しくお祭りで部活なのです。もう脇で見てることなんかできませんです。きっと新人いじめの洗礼で脱ゲーム三昧で可哀想可哀想なの
there were pieces of glass breaking glass on the product side near the village border, as if there was an accident. Some people wondered how anyone could have had an accident when there was no obstruction on the road. The elderly people said to each other that they always had to drive carefully, even on a familiar road. But it looked like only a trace of a normal accident, so they didn't get suspicious. The rest was a ghost story. The villagers heard an extra firework to signal the festival taking place. It wasn't a mecca. The people in charge of the fireworks were puzzled. But when Rika said, Are you sure someone must have shot the extra firework? The villagers simply believed that was true. <laughs> it was the night of Washinagashi, the biggest festival of the year. The villagers forgot their worries and enjoyed themselves. The club members were doing grace as usual. <laughs> they were doing so great that they were all taken to the main tent and yelled at by the mayor. <laughs> that was a normal Washingashi night for the villagers. But there was one thing that was very different. The girls fought for an unimaginably long time in many different worlds for the sake of this night. However, nobody would ever know that. Oh, there's another big change too. Rika Thurude says that she wants to go to a pool in summer. It's unusual for her to say she wants to do something. She wants to see the stars. She wants to go on a camping trip. She wants to look at the sunflowers. <laughs> She wants to make the school into a haunted house, etc. <laughs> there are so many things she wants to do over the summer break. Right. Rika Frude, for the first time, is making plans for after June 1983. Because this is the first summer break she's going to experience after 100 years of repeating the same life. She will now experience an all new summer vacation. Who would stop her from getting excited about that? Rika Thrude is looking forward to waking up before Satoko to rip the page off the calendar at the end of June. <laughs> Rika Thrude's infinite future has begun. There are infinite possibilities, yet she can only make one choice. And that's why it's a great world. Let's talk for a moment about the people who fought with Rika Thrude. Mion Sanazaki has vowed to study hard so she can continue her education after the summer break. According to Keiichi, even that might not be enough time for her. Uh, however, how can the legendary club leader, Mion Sanazaki, fail an entrance exam? She'll more than likely find a way to get into the school she wants to go to. Hopefully, it isn't an illegal one. <laughs> Anyhow, she's looking forward to enjoying her final summer break. So she has tons of plans. The club members can't get away from you, even during the summer. Once you're involved with her, she'll always find a way to get at you. No matter how much you want to be alone, you'll never go back to spending a boring summer by yourself. Katie Maibara has been asked by Mion and Chia Sensei to be their next class president. He was also asked to be the next club leader too, <laughs> but he declined immediately. <laughs> Keiichi likes the club because Mion runs it. He continued saying that it's Mion's club until she got mad. <laughs> Keiichi can't understand why she's so angry. Well, Keiichi wouldn't be Keiichi if he wasn't dense. <laughs> so things are rather lively around him again today. This good name continues to spread, even in Okinomiya. Ren and Ryugu is growing more energetic every day too. <laughs> Sadaka, Rika, and Tanyu spend every day in fear of being abducted by her. <laughs> Still, she's been acting more mature lately. She takes care of her younger classmates, and she's almost like a mother figure to the class. She's like a mother to all the club members too. 
After hearing that, Keiichi said he'd be the father of a class. Um, <laughs> is that going to get him result in Nom, uh, Rena going, uh, all kawaii mode and punching him or something? As usual, Rena thought about Pat too much and blushed. Sadako Ojo was as lively as ever. She used up most of her traps on the mountain during the battle with the mountain dogs. So she's setting up new ones for the next event. <laughs> Aww. Rumor has it, some members of the Bloodhounds are so impressed with her trap techniques that they asked her for some lessons. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, supposed to be a training area near the Mount Fuji. They asked her to set up their traps there. <laughs> That's not a very good idea. The sea of trees really will become a forest of no return. Uh, either way, Sadako keeps saying how she wants to fight against the Bloodhounds next. She's invincible. <laughs> also, she's becoming a great cook. That's because Hanyu has been teaching her. According to Hanyu, Sadako is a quick learner as compared to Riko. Sadako's dream is to master fried chicken, which is her brother's favourite, and welcome him home with it. I'm the only one who knows this. But her dream may come true very soon. Oh, yay! <laughs> As for her brother, Satoshi Hojo has yet to return home. His condition is unchanged. If there's been any change, it's in Shion Sonazaki. <laughs> She goes to the clinic on her days off. Nobody knows why she goes <laughs> But she seems to be very happy, so nobody pays much attention to it. <laughs> Mion has te teased Shion by saying that maybe she's planning on getting implants, but Shion just smiles. Also, for whatever reason, she's been visiting her relative's clothes shop and buying up all kinds of men's clothing. Lately, She's even buy started buying more than just men's clothing, but why is she so excited when she visits the maid clinic with a maid outfit that's not her in her size? What? Um, so you're half expecting some kind of, um, or something from, uh, coach. Um, is she dressing up Satoshi with the maid clothes? I don't know. The truth is shrouded in mystery. The biggest change is probably that Shion babies Satoko nowadays. She tries to make Satoko call her Nene, but Chenya annoys Satoko. <laughs> Kyosuke Rie has two jobs now. On one hand, he's a respected doctor, and on the other hand, he's an evangel evangelist for maids. Uh, the area clinic was supposed to be closed. The villagers pleaded with the authorities not to shut it down. Oh, well, Irie isn't originally from the village. He and everyone else feel that he's one of the villagers now. He's an indispensable part of village life. Conservative, you know, conservative attitude towards cinema's hour syndrome is gone. Now it is being researched very proactively. The syndrome is being researched so passionately that, hopefully, in the near future, all the victims of this disease will be freed for good. Also, later on, Irie will publish an advanced article about the influence of the brain on human behaviour, which will surprise people in the medical world. I won't go into the details here, but I'll talk about how one should hate the sins instead of a sin. Oh, uh, it will talk about how. The deceased Hifumi Takano and Mio Takano's names will be mentioned in that article. Uh-huh. Yes, Mio T um, Tanako is dead, but um, what about Miyoko Tanashi, I think it was? <laughs> Jiro Tomotake still visits in Mizawa every recent season. He's still known as a fighting traveling photographer, and he continues to walk around the village looking for good picture spots. However, he isn't seen in the village as much as before. 
His bicycle is always parked around the back of the clinic, so maybe he spends a lot of time there. Some villagers say maybe he's sick and being treated, but his uh, bright smile proves they are all wrong. Uh, proves they are wrong. Emil Takana hasn't been seen since that day. Nobody knows where she has gone, but obviously, Tomotake isn't worried, so she must be doing fine. We should probably show up one day, out of nowhere, and start telling ghost stories to scare some kids. Maybe she's in the basement, also getting treated. And that's why uh, Tomotake is always at the um, clinic. As for Mamoru Akasaka, what happened to him was pretty funny. <laughs> Uh huh. His wife and daughter followed him in secret. They pretended to run into him at the festival. <laughs> Rika called him. <laughs> Papa, so things grew complicated all of a sudden. <laughs> I got Saka's wife smiled, which choked his neck with her braided hair. Her arms were folded, but her braid moved like a tail. Squeeze. She tortured a man who destroyed a special forces unit without even using a weapon. We could continue to tease him, making the situation even worse. However, Akasaka's family liked Enrizawa, and they said they wanted to come back. <laughs> Akasaka's daughter and Rika grew so close that they seemed like sisters. Kuraudo Oishi has gotten back into playing Mahjong. <laughs> Whatever reason, Akane Sanzaki has joined his table too. In this room is a right god almost got dispatched to Mahjong Father one time. <laughs> oh dear. His colleagues say Oishi has calmed down quite a bit. It's probably because he's reached closure within himself. But his colleagues know nothing about that. He's planning to move to Hokkaido when he retires, but he wants to come back every summer. His bright second life is waiting for him. Tatsuyoshi Kasai hasn't changed much compared to the others. To some people, this was a life-changing event, but for Kasai, it was just enough to tail episode added to his tales of heroics. According to Kasai, this incident was just a little bigger than usual. If it was just a little unusual, then what in the world would you be, need or be needed to impress him? <laughs> Shion insists that he will tell her, but Kasai only tells her that it's, that's a secret. Also, he regretted exposing that part of his past. <laughs> Shion keeps begging him to tell her all about it, but, she sim but he simply ignores her. <laughs> Let me talk about myself, too. I, honey. <laughs> I'm doing great in my new life, this is her new Frude. I'm finally getting better at playing games, and now I'm taking the role of the club's dark horse, a position formerly reserved for KT my brother. I have a bad habit of believing everything I hear, so me and one of the others always tell me some strange things. Thanks to that, I am getting tougher, to put it in a good way. True, to put it in a bad one. But then, I need to, otherwise I wouldn't survive in this club. I'm going to continue to learn a lot of stuff through these club activities, so I can live in this human world. Sunday, June 19th, 1983. Night falls my longest day of the past 3,000 years. Uh, past thousand years. I have no idea where I got the three. I think I just saw the TH went, okay, three. Uh, <laughs> the club members are having a blast. A lot of people are here. The store vendors are still doing business. The speakers are blaring off with exciting festival music. I've known all of these, but how wonderful it is to actually feel and hear them in person. I thought I knew. I thought I knew because I've been following and watching them. But that was completely different. I knew of it, but this is the first time I've actually experienced it. We had a, a takoyaki eating contest. <clears throat> there was no octopus in it, but it was still very tasty. We had a shaved ice eating contest. I would have enjoyed the shaved ice if I had eaten it more slowly. 
I bought a candied apple for the first time. Everyone took a bite from it. It was tasty. And it was fun. No. <laughs> we played a shooting game. I don't know how difficult it would be to shoot a target. I didn't know how difficult it would be. But it was fun too. Also, we played a shady lottery game. It was one of those things where you pulled a string and got a prize. Nobody got a good prize. We all complained about it to the vendor. That too, it was just so much fun. Then it was time for the dedication dance. Of course, we go there early. So we commandeered the best seats. I snuck out and stood where I was told to. I could see better than the other club members. This was the spot where the object of worship sat. <laughs> this was where I was supposed to be during the ritual dance. No, this is where I thought I had to be. But seeing the dance from that spot wasn't fun. Therefore, I returned to where I was and sat with everyone else. They saved me a spot. Everyone rubbed my head while asking me where I went. I apologised by saying, oh wow, <laughs> that made me very happy. I watched the performance in the crowd of people. It was the best dance I've witnessed in the past thousand years. I couldn't keep even my happiness or my tears from flowing out. After the dance was over, a handful of cotton was passed around to all the villagers. We let the cotton absorb all the filth and sins of the past year and washed it down the stream. Cotton is cotton. Obviously it's not human. We use cotton instead of a human, so that nobody is sad. In other words, this is the way to purify sins without making anyone suffer. Hi, this is the water. The girl who gave me the cotton took the letter I from her name during last year's Washington and washed it down the stream. By doing so, she was freed from her suffering and began a new life. We drifted our sins down the stream. It's not the same as pushing our sins onto the cotton. Instead, we wash away our own sins and forgive ourselves. We forgive each other, we help each other, and that's how we create our own story. I put my cotton in the stream gently. Hmm. <laughs> the cotton went down the stream into the world where sins are cleansed. I let my bare feet soak in the clear stream. As I watched the long, long line cotton flowing downstream in the dark, surrounded by people sending their cotton flowing down the wondrous stream. <laughs> 